Good morning, brothers and sisters. I trust that you had a fruitful week in spite of the ongoing lockdown. Won't you open your Bibles to Psalms 139? And I want to read from verse 19. Psalms 139 from verse 19. If only you would slay the wicked, O God. Away from me, you bloodthirsty men. They speak of you with evil intent. Your adversaries misuse your name. Do I not hate those who hate you, O Lord, and abhor those who rise up against you? I have nothing but hatred for them. I count them my enemies. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Come, let's pray. Our Father, we come before you in Jesus' name. And Lord, this morning we give you thanks for your many blessings upon our lives. Father, we thank you that you've blessed us with another day. We pray, Lord, that we may glorify you in this day and through this week. Lord, we continue to pray for those who are not well, who are infected by the coronavirus or maybe some other illness of God. Father, we lift them up before you. Lord, won't you bring healing to them? We pray, Lord, for those who are in mourning. Father, we pray that you may bring them comfort, O God. Won't you wrap your arms of compassion around them? We pray, Lord, for those who are unemployed. Father, lead them to places of opportunity, we pray. We pray, Lord, for businesses who are struggling right now. Father, we pray that you may have mercy upon them. We pray, Lord, for those who are struggling to put food on the table. Lord, we pray uh, that you may provide their every need. We continue to pray for those in the front line, our nurses, our doctors. Father, we pray that you may protect them. We pray, Lord, for the scientists who are still looking uh, for a cure uh, for this virus. Father, we pray that you may give them much wisdom. Lord, we pray as we open your word now. Father, won't you speak to the hearts of each one of us. In Jesus' name and for his name's sake. Amen. Psalms 139 uh, verse 19. Uh, the title of my sermon this morning is God's plan for the wicked. Friends, we come to an end uh, of our time in Psalms 139. And I trust that it has been of great spiritual value uh, to you uh, in your walk with the Lord. And uh, as we reflect on the psalm, uh, you'll remember that from verse 1 uh, to verse 18, uh, David's focus has been heavenwards uh, as he reflects on the nature of God. But now in this final section, his focus shifts earthwards as he reflects on the wicked. Friends, there are two uh, groups of people in our world. Uh, on the one hand, we have the godly uh, who are led by the Spirit and who are clothed with the righteousness of Jesus. And on the other hand, we have the ungodly or the wicked who are controlled by their sinful uh, nature and its desires. One day as you reflect on that truth this morning, what group do you belong to? I trust that you can say with certainty in heart this morning, I am a godly person. So as we reflect on this passage, uh, verse 19 to verse 24, uh, let me draw your attention to three truths. Firstly, I want you to notice David's heart. Um, and as uh, David reflects on the wicked, you'll notice that his heart is filled with anger and hatred because their actions are an attack on God himself. Listen to what he says there in verse 21. Do I not hate those who hate you, O Lord, and abhor those who rise up against you? I have nothing but hatred for them. I count them my enemies. That's David's heart right now. It is full of hatred and anger. Notice the language he uses to describe the wicked. He calls them bloodthirsty meaning that they have no concern for human life and neither are they satisfied with the lives they have taken. Their thirst for blood is never quenched. 
Friends, the wicked have their hearts set on destroying what God has created. Therefore, their actions demonstrate that they have no concern for God, the giver of life. We were reminded in this psalm that God is the one who creates life. He is the one who gives life. But the wicked in their actions are the ones who take life away. They are bloodthirsty. He speaks of them, uh, of uh, people who speak of God, but with evil intent. In other words, their motives are evil. They speak of God not to glorify Him, but to mock Him and to stir up trouble for Christians. Now, the Apostle Paul was very familiar with this during his ministry. Listen to what he says in Philippians chapter 1, verse 15. Paul says, It is true that some preach Christ out of envy and rivalry, but others out of goodwill. The latter do so in love, knowing that I am put here for the defense of the gospel. The former preach Christ out of selfish ambition, not sincerely supposing they can stir up trouble for me while I am in chains. That's the actions of the wicked. They speak of God with evil intent. David goes on to say that they misuse God's name. Friends, God's name is who he is. It reveals his character. Therefore, he commanded his people not to misuse his name. In Philippians chapter 2 verse 9, we are reminded that God gave Jesus the name that is above every other name. There is no name greater than the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yet how often have we heard the name of Jesus being used as a substitute for vulgarity? They misuse his name. And then fourthly and lastly, he says that they shake their fists uh, in rebellion against God. This is the action of the wicked. And David's heart is full of anger and hatred. He wants nothing to do with them. Instead, David's desire is to be the blessed man of Psalm chapter 1. You remember Psalms chapter 1, this well-known Psalm, Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, or stand in the way of sinners, or sit in the seat of mockers. That's the man that David desires to be. Friends, this morning as we reflect on the actions of the wicked, how do you and I respond to wickedness around us? Maybe you have a friend or a family member who constantly uses the name of Jesus in vain. How do you respond to that? Or maybe when you speak to someone about the Lord Jesus, they mock you, they laugh at you, they ridicule you, they create problems for you. How do you as a Christian respond to that? Does it create anger within us? Or do we simply ignore it and brush it aside? Friends, as Christians, we must certainly pray uh, for those uh, wicked that God would convict them uh, of their wickedness and uh, that he would draw them unto himself just as he drew you and I uh, to himself. But we must never give our approval to their behavior. David's heart filled with anger and hatred. But secondly, this morning, verse 19, notice David's frustration. He says there, if only you would slay the wicked, O God. Friend, David knows uh, that God hates uh, the wicked, their wickedness. He said so himself. Have a look at Psalms chapter 5, uh, verse 4. David is writing here. He says, you are not a God who takes pleasure in evil. With you, the wicked cannot dwell. The arrogant cannot stand in your presence. You hate all who do wrong. You destroy those who tell lies. Bloodthirsty and deceitful men the Lord abhors. 
What about Psalms 11 verse 5? Again, David says, The Lord examines the righteous, but the wicked and those who love violence his soul hates. On the wicked he will rain fiery coals and burning sulfur. A scorching wind will be their lot. As David is angered, so God is angered. As David hates wickedness, so God hates wickedness. But it seems uh, in this verse as if David is frustrated that God has not yet destroyed the wicked. Friends, the Bible reminds us that God does have a plan for the wicked and his plan is destructive. In fact, he gives us a glimpse of their destruction uh, when he destroyed their ancestors by water. You'll remember the story recorded for us in the book of Genesis. And we pick it up in Genesis chapter 6 verse 5. Listen to what God's word says. The Lord saw how great man's wickedness on earth had become. And that every inclination of the thoughts of his heart was evil all the time. The Lord was grieved that he had made man on the earth. And his heart was filled with pain. So the Lord said. This is language of judgment. Language of destruction. I will wipe mankind whom I have created from the face of the earth. God has a plan. He demonstrates his plan here. A plan of destruction. Pick up the story again. Uh, you'll remember that the floods came uh, for 40 days. It continued uh, raining. Uh, pick up the story again there. Uh, in verse 21 of Genesis chapter 7, every living thing that moved on the earth perished. Birds, livestock, wild animals, all the creatures that swam over the earth, all mankind. Everything on dry land that had the breath of life in its nostrils died. Every living thing on the face of the earth was wiped out, men and animals. And the creatures that move along the ground and the birds of the air were wiped out. Only Noah was left and those in the ark. See, my brother, my sister, God does have a plan for wickedness. And his plan is destructive. Even though God had destroyed uh, the wicked in the days of Noah, uh, wickedness uh, quickly uh, rose up again, uh, even through uh, the actions of Noah, his sons and their descendants. It wasn't long uh, before uh, wickedness became a reality once again. So much so that it was very, very real in the days of David. So much so that it was very, very real in the days of Jesus. So much so that wickedness is very, very real in our day today as well. And Jesus in Matthew uh, chapter 13 verse 24, the parable of the weeds, uh, he reminds us that God has a plan for the wicked and it is a destructive plan. What a, an amazing parable this is, the parable of the weeds, Matthew 13, 24. I trust that you'll spend a moment uh, going through this parable, uh, reading through it, uh, but just to, to give you a brief idea of what the parable is, um, the farmer sows uh, the wheat, uh, but uh, the evil person comes, uh, his enemy comes and he sows weeds as well. And his servants are asked him, well, should we go and pull out uh, the weeds? And he says to them, no, uh, don't do that because you may destroy the wheat at the same time. Let's pick up the story in verse 36 as Jesus explains this parable to them. Then he left the crowd and went into the house. His disciples came to him and said, Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. He answered, The one who sowed the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world and the good seed stands for the sons of the kingdom. The weeds are the sons of the evil one. And the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age and the age uh, and the harvests are the angels. As the weeds are pulled up and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send out his angels and they will weed out his kingdom, everything that causes sin and all who do evil. They will throw them into the fiery furnace 
where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Friends, in this passage, Jesus is reminding us that God has a plan, a destructive plan for the wicked. Let me make three comments very quickly uh, on this parable. First of all, you'll notice that God in his wisdom allows the wicked to live side by side with the righteous. Shall we go and pull them up, the weeds? No, says the master. Let both grow together until the harvest. Could God have dealt with the wicked uh, in the days of David, in the days of Jesus, in, in our days, completely destroyed them? Of course he could, but he hasn't completely. He says, let both the wicked and the righteous grow together, live together until the harvest. Because he has a wonderful plan, a destructive plan. Notice as well that their destruction is certain, but a future event. Verse 41 reminds us of this, that at the end of the age, the Son of Man will send his angels and they will weed out his kingdom, everything that causes sin and all who do evil. They will be judged accordingly. And thirdly, verse 42, they will be destroyed by fire. There is a judgment coming. They will throw them into the fiery furnace where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. My brother, my sister, there is a judgment coming. God does have a plan for the wicked. It is a destructive plan. Friends, someone said that in hell there is no fire escape. The Bible reminds us in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 9 that the wicked will not inherit the kingdom of God. God. Well, thirdly, this morning, verse 23, we notice David's concern. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is an offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. You see, his concern here is for his own heart. Sometimes, my brother, my sister, we get so caught up in talking about the wicked out there that we forget to examine the wickedness of our own heart. Therefore, David says, see if there's any offensive way in me. See if there's any wickedness in me. That must be our prayer as well. Friends, if you are a Christian, then in Jesus your salvation is secure. But on this side of the grave, we struggle with our sinful nature and its sinful desires. Therefore, we need to put to death our sinful nature and its desires on a daily basis. We need to allow God the Holy Spirit to examine our hearts through His Word, to search our heart, to put on His spotlight, in our heart and to see if there's any wickedness in our heart so that we may deal with that effectively. We need to remind ourselves that we have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live but Christ lives in me. The life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and who gave himself for me. David desires that God examines his heart. My brother, my sister, that should be our desire, O oh God. Search me. See if there's any wickedness within me. Friends, the message for today is that God has a destructive plan for the wicked. For those who have rejected Jesus. For those who live their lives for their own glory. He has a plan. It's a future plan. It is still to come. His final and fearful words to them will be, Depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fires prepared for the devil and his uh, angels, his demons. What terrifying words to hear. I trust that none of us will ever, ever hear those words from God. See, my brother, my sister, you and I can escape God's judgment. And we do so by inviting the Lord Jesus Christ into our heart 
to be our Lord and our Savior and then we live for His glory. The psalm reminds us that our God knows all things. He knows your heart right now. He knows my heart. We cannot deceive Him. Our God is everywhere. We can't hide from Him. Rather, let us just simply surrender our all to Him. Our God has given us physical life, but He also wants to give you, more importantly, eternal life. If you would like to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you would like uh, to receive this eternal life that the Lord Jesus promises, then won't you pray this prayer after me? Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you that you died for my sins. I confess my sins to you and ask for your forgiveness. I ask that you come into my heart by your spirit and help me from now on to live a life that pleases you. In Jesus' name, amen. My brother, my sister, if you have prayed that prayer with sincerity, then praise God you are now a Christian. It's important for you to make Contact with a Bible-believing church in your area so that you can grow in your walk with the Lord. Or you can get in touch with us at Hope Community Church in Bramley. We'd love to hear from you. God bless.